Thanks, man. The male guy just looked at me like I'm a creep. That's great. <laughs> So some of you might know that I am a teacher um, and part of what I do in life is work with kids and work with the youth and I enjoy getting kids into the outdoors. Musky fishing is not the best outlet for that as a lot of you guys know. My goal here with this video is I want to show a lot of the kids that follow my channel how they could fish um, and I guess anywhere really uh, how they could fish, how they can get into fishing and how you can do it relatively cheap and have a lot of action. So I'm going to go to Turtle Creek. It's a creek right in my city. Um, there is a ton of smallmouth. Um, there's some that get up into like 17, 18 inches but the average size is like a foot long. Um, they're really, really fun to catch. I do it all the time. I take buddies to do it all the time. Um, it's, it's a good time. So I'm gonna show you how I set up to go for a day fishing in the creek, and uh, then hopefully I'm gonna go actually catch some fish in the creek. I don't even know what my setup is anymore. This is a Shakespeare something rather, and a Cabela's guide series. They're not even in business anymore. Um, the reason I don't know what it is is because I don't care. It doesn't matter what you have. The fish don't know what you're fishing with. Um, if you enjoy this and you like having fun with fishing, buy some more expensive stuff because it is nice and it makes your job a lot easier. But if you're just looking to try it and catch some fish, it does not matter. Lures are really straightforward. Tiny spinner baits like this. This is a Meps Aglia Zero. Um, I'll go up to a size one. No problem, it's just a little bit bigger. The bigger the number, the bigger the lure. I also like to have a popper of some kind. This is like a Rapala ultralight pop something. Um, Fire Tiger, color doesn't matter, I don't think. Um, it's really fun to watch fish hunt and eat these. Uh, also, it weeds out a little bit of the smaller fish if you get to that point in your life. Jig and a twister tail, also really, really good. Um, you do want to have one of these. You go to Walmart and you are there. They sell something called a gulp minnow. It is pretty much unstoppable in the creek um, and you will catch a ton, ton, ton of fish. That being said, I think we're good. I think we're ready to go and I think we're ready to uh, hopefully catch some smallmouth. So I guess the next step in this is determining where you can fish and where you can't fish. Uh, in Wisconsin, as long as you're in the water, you are legal to be fishing. So Turtle Creek's kind of weird because as I zoom in on Turtle Creek, you can see it goes basically from the interstate all the way down here by the state line. Um, it crosses into Illinois here, so be careful if you're old enough to need a fishing license. You do need to get um, an Illinois fishing license. There is some great fishing right down here, but uh, just be aware that you are not in Wisconsin. Turtle Creek does go through some people's backyards. Do not trespass, do not go on their property, don't go on their land. As long as you stay in the creek, you are fine. So what I like to do is I like to find these little green areas right here. Um, that tells me that is a park of some kind, which means it's public, you can access the creek in that spot. If I go to satellite imagery, I zoom in on the spot. It looked like maybe you'd have to access from this East Trail Drive right here. I don't know, if you get there and there's no access, you can't go there. It's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, but if you can get to the creek, you can walk in and you can start fishing. I like to look at the satellite images. These dark spots are darker uh, because they're deeper. They're usually deeper spots that hold a lot of fish. So this spot could be something I might check out. All of this stuff is a park, well, parks, it's, it's different parks, and it's very accessible. Um, I'm gonna take you to the spot that I went to today just to give you a starting point. Um, it's called Totem Mound Park, and you can actually park right here in this little circle. It's also an interesting area. There's some Indian mounds uh, back in there you can look at. 
Um, it's kind of cool. Maybe you don't know those things exist in Beloit, but they are there. Um, it's all pretty accessible. It's shallow. It's not very dangerous. Make sure the creek isn't up and sketchy. Don't put yourself in a bad situation. Um, but if it's where I'm going, it's pretty much knee deep, ankle deep, and you're just kind of walking and casting some of those deeper spots. Again, all of this is accessible, okay? There's another um, park right up here, Turtle Creek Moccasin Trail you can go to. Uh, if you know where Culver's is and where uh, Milwaukee Road is, Frozen is right here. There is a park right here, I believe. Yep, there's the parking lot. You can walk right down here to the creek. It loops around, you can go down there to the creek. Uh, there's some trails that go back. You can you can get to these spots with a bike, with, uh, make sure you have parents permission, obviously. Um, they can take you, they can drive you there, and you can easily fish all of these spots. All right, back to the video. I am to the first spot. Um, I kind of inserted an overlay as to how I find some of these spots on the creek. Um, I do not trespass or anything like that to get to the water, um, but I do wear uh, old shorts, some Crocs, a uh, hat, good pair of sunglasses is good too. That way um, you can get in the water and move around from spot to spot. As you'll see, that's kind of how I do most of my fishing. Uh, when I'm in the creek. So uh, I'm gonna switch from this camera to my chest camera and uh, we'll kind of hopefully hopefully get a few because we are at the water. And now we fish. I am going to start out with um, this little Meps spinner fire tiger kind of color so this creek is mostly a rocky bottom there are some kind of mucky spots but honestly anywhere you can see that there is like a deeper hole or an eddy is what we call it kind of like a back swirl that's where I like to target so I'm gonna walk up on one right now all right spot one so you can see I don't know if you can see actually there's kind of a wedge right here strong current in the middle and then uh, these smallmouth will sit right in this uh, really, really fast. I'm going to catch a fish doing just that. Um, they'll sit in this fast current and they'll wait for minnows to get pushed down. So um, I like to cast down along the line of it. And then you can see back over in that area, there's kind of a, a spinning um, and they'll sit in there as well. So let's see what we can, what we can do here. With the current, you don't really have to reel as fast as you normally would with these because the current does a lot of the work for you and it keeps that bait, oop, one just missed it. It keeps that bait right in the zone where they wanna, where they wanna eat. So, all right, I had a couple miss it right there. So I'm gonna make that short little cast again and see if I can get one of those to, to connect. Oh well, I might get some top water to go today too. There we go. Didn't miss that time. Again, nothing big, but it took me five minutes to get here. I'm using maybe, maybe $20 worth of gear, and uh, it's incredibly fun. I can sit here and do this all day. There it went. Again, he's probably like a nine inch fish, which is not crazy, and it's not like something insane, but it's fun and it's right here in town so go ahead back he goes um and we'll keep fishing i usually don't get much deeper than like knee deep so even uh Again, just an old pair of basketball shorts works. I always like wearing Crocs, but uh, old pair of shoes 
flip-flops is kind of a eh, your feet like to slip around and slide in them but if you have a goofy fishing shirt like i'm wearing you could wear that that's always a plus make fun of it if you want but it's got really dope pockets for all the things that i don't carry usually a handful right back in that uh oh all right that's fun pretty bad on me Woo. usually brute force is oh no my line broke i'm gonna chalk that up as a loss because well that lure basically just disappeared i don't know if it fell right underneath that tree i was gonna try and get it but uh I think it's under that deep hole right over there, but whatever. Um, it's not very often you actually lose any baits here because it's so shallow you could just walk up and grab them. I might walk over there a little bit later after I fish for a bit and see if I can find it, but um, until then, let's use a little jig and a small paddle tail. Um, I don't know the exact size. It looks like it's probably like a 1 16th ounce and like maybe a 2 or 3 inch. Anything that looks like a small minnow. I don't think color matters as long as it's minnow-like in its existence. I do notice that in the summer, as it gets a little bit later, you really need to focus on those, uh, those deeper holes because it's cooler water and those fish like to, smallmouth especially, love cold water. And so they'll, those backwaters and those eddies are good, but the currents and the deep holes are the, that's where you want to be. Okay, I like this, but let's try something a little different just to do it. I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to cut that off. And what I'm going to do is, they're, pick, they're picking it off the bottom a little bit, so I'm going to go to a little bit of a heavier jig uh, that's almost too big I don't think that's much bigger I do like this one let's just go with this if you can't catch a fish in a river with this bait something is wrong with you I'm just kidding there's times when it doesn't work but it almost feels automatic okay that's gonna catch a fish awesome don't worry. I mean I know there's a ton of fish but there's gotta be one that's hungry enough to pick this thing up I can't talk all this crap about fishing with a white twister tail and then not be able to catch a fish on it. That would be embarrassing. Uh, getting grumpy. So now we're basically back to where we got in the water, but I'm going to go up the creek just a little ways. I have a really good spot up the creek a little ways, but oh, there you go. <laughs> that was a good one. And I didn't realize it was a fish. There he is. He's not a good one, but he's better. Holy cats. That took longer than I wanted it to take. Stop, 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 stop. A little bit of blood. He's all right. Promise. <laughs> Graceful. Got me. See, I told you it was impossible to not catch a fish on that. Now the problem is I kind of want to keep fishing with it, but I also don't because it hasn't been as great as I wanted it to be. Okay, here's what I'm going to do for the last, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. I'm going to use this top water bait. And the reason I'm going to use this top water bait is because it's unbelievably fun to watch these smallmouth hunt this top water bait. So this is a Rapala all UL pop ultralight pop 
04, I'm guessing, is either the size or the color. I don't know. I bought it at Walmart. Um, it's Fire Tiger. I don't think color matters too much. But what this does is it sits on the top of the water like this, and when you pull it, this like pop, pop, makes a pop noise. And you don't have to always be popping it. You can kind of just pop it along and let it sit. And those small mouth will come up and just whack and smack it. So we're going to see. I'm going to narrow my field of view here on my camera and see if we can get a couple uh, small mouths eating this. Because this is hands down my favorite way to fish for them on the creek. Um, they're just, they don't always cooperate. So we'll see what we can do and uh, see if we can get some bites. A lot of times fish will eat and because there's a huge commotion, people just set the hook and like, woo, like whip that lure. Um, you have to do your best. It's the hardest thing in the world. You have to do your best to wait until you feel that fish, like pull on your line before you set the hook or do anything. Cause nine times out of 10, what you do is you just rip that either lure past your head because it didn't actually get the lure or you end up pulling it out of its mouth if it has it or something. Ooh, one just missed right there. It'll come back maybe. I know you guys probably couldn't see it, but I could. Have I told you guys to buy polarized glasses yet? You should. What a turd. All right, keep her moving. All right, that's a good sign. I saw one, he came flying from underneath that and like he didn't go for it, but then he kept circling it like he was going to. So I'm going to move up to this next kind of patch of shade and see if we can get one to go. Oh, one just ate it. He didn't get hooks, but he ate it. There's one on it right now. He's under it. Oh, that scared him. Oh, I think one just missed. Couldn't tell. Oh, yeah. Dang it. Spot. But I don't catch much for smallmouth out of it. It's one of those deals where it looks so, so good. I just missed a fish because I wasn't paying attention. Alright. I need to swap here. We hit a lot of action on this little paddle tail. Let's go back to that for a little bit. Ooh. That one felt a little feistier, but he is quite honestly the smallest one I've caught, maybe. A little, little guy. Go. Get out of here. Now that is interesting. This might be a sheephead. Or it's a nicer bass. I'm hoping it's a nicer bass. Yeah, it's a little bit nicer bass. Probably the nicest one we've caught today. He's not crazy. But this is what I'm kind of looking for usually when I come down here. He's not hooked great. This is what I thought that first one was. This one around my legs. Yeah. Again, you can do that in town. Right in town. Not crazy, but that's pretty cool. In my mind. I think that's cool. Alright. See you later, dude. Ow, he bit my thumb. Right back down to where he came from. Alright, so I'm going to wrap this video up right here. I know that this was not musky content. Um, Again, if you watch this hoping it was, I, I'm sorry, but I kind of warned you from the beginning. I hope that you did watch this, you picked something up. 
Um, if you're a student, if you have questions, anything, comment, uh, shoot me a message, talk to me at school, do whatever you want to do. I can help you get set up to come out and do this. Again, I'm right here in Beloit. If you're not one of my students, if you're someone who just stumbled into this, if there's a creek near you, you could probably do something like this as well and get set up pretty easy and pretty cheap. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I will catch you on the next video. If you could, please subscribe. That helps me out a ton. And uh, enjoy your summer.